This video is sponsored by Build Your Store AI. Do you enjoy bad dental hygiene, losing weight, and destroying all personal relationships? Well, boy, do I have the thing for you. All you have to do is go to your local drugstore, find a little package with the name Sudafed on it, purchase it, some may even steal it, and you're halfway there. Now, what does hydroiodic acid have to do with this? Well, I am glad you asked. Hydroiodic acid is the acid people use to break bad. Yes! Yeah! Hey, come on, baby! Come on! Yes! Come on! Ah! This acid has such a beautiful liquid purple color, it's almost like Barney got caught taking some honey packs and logging into OnlyFans. You're gonna wanna stick around for the whole video, you busy bees, as this is the deep dive into a beautiful reagent synthesis. Now, if you don't know what hydroiodic acid is, it's a pretty useful reagent. The only problem is people know it for only one specific thing. And since I'd like to keep my channel, it rhymes with Seth Bambet the King. The main reason that I use hydroiodic acid is to make alkyl halides. Things like methyl iodide and ethyl iodide are notoriously expensive, and I really don't want to pay the money in shipping for it. Now the reason why people use hydroiodic acid to break bad is it's good at reducing pseudoephedrine and ephedrine. Pseudoephedrine and ephedrine are essentially the same except for one key thing. They are diastereomers. And diastereomers are like different versions of a 3D puzzle that look similar but aren't exact mirror images of each other. Imagine two Lego structures that use the same pieces and have a similar shape but differ in how some parts are arranged. This is exactly what pseudoephedrine and ephedrine are, just slightly different. This is a speculative reaction mechanism. I'm not gonna go too deep into it. All you really need to know is hydroiodic acid and red phosphorus is used, and we're left with the hydroxyl group basically being deleted. I think it would be cool to actually make the acid that people use to break bad, and that's exactly the point of this video. Well, well, n well not to break bad, but to just make a cool acid. Unless I get stage four lung cancer, then watch out Walgreen. Though, before we go on to the video, I have one quick thing to say. Have you ever gotten mad at trying to make your own online business? I know I have, and I was left feeling frustrated. Today, I'm gonna to show you the easiest way to start your very own online business without spending a fortune or investing countless hours. Whether you're looking for a side hustle or aiming to turn this into a full-time gig, you need to check out Build Your Store AI, the ultimate tool for launching a successful e-commerce business. First things first, Build Your Store AI makes it super simple to get started, and the best part, it's free to try for the first few days, so there's zero risk to you. Let's walk through this together. First, register on the Build Your Store AI platform and pick a niche that matches your interests and market demand. This part is crucial and Build Your Store AI makes it easy to choose from high potential categories. Next, you'll want to set up your store using Shopify. Build Your Store AI recommends starting with the basic Shopify plan, which keeps your initial cost low at just $1 per month for the first three months. Just follow the guided setup instructions Build Your Store AI provides, and trust me, it couldn't be any clearer. Now, here's the fun part, installing the Build Your Store app. One click and boom, your unique Shopify store is generated automatically, no fuss and no headaches. To make things even smoother, register for AutoDS and integrate it with your new Shopify store. This step streamlines your product sourcing and automates order fulfillment, saving you hours of work. You can even explore features like the AutoDS Marketplace, handpicked products, and trending product recommendations. AutoDS makes running your store practically hands-free with its order automation features and real-time inventory management. Once you've set everything up, review your store, make sure all products look great, and get ready to launch. Just like that, your store is live and open for business. And did I mention this can be done in a single day? Ready to start building your online store? Click the link in the description to get your free AI store builder today and watch your entrepreneurial dream become a reality. All right, let's go make that hydroiodic acid. To a 250 milliliter round bottom boiling flask, I added 100 grams of potassium iodide. Naturally, it got stuck in the funnel and I had to use a metal scoop to push it all the way down. I don't know why, but it really reminds me of something. Ah, I see now. To this, I added 60 milliliters of 75% phosphoric acid. 
Now, my phosphoric acid, I'm going to assume it's a little bit less than 75%, as I've had it for a while and it's likely absorbed some water. I also included a stir bar, however, it's really not going to do anything. The next step in the synthesis is really just to set up for a simple distillation. First, I'm going to add a three-way adapter. To the top of this, I'm going to add a thermometer adapter. To this, you might have guessed it, but I'm going to add a thermometer to the thermometer adapter. We need to keep track of the temperature during this. A condenser was then attached to the remaining adapter. Then, a vacuum adapter was attached so we don't overload the system. Finally, a receiving flask was attached to this with a 10% solution of sodium hydroxide. This is just in case any cloudy distillate comes over. Now we just gotta crank the shit out of the heat so we can actually distill the hydroiodic acid. As our flask heats up, we can see a slight yellow color that's appearing in the flask. Now, this is actually just elemental iodine. Like I said before, hydroiodic acid is a pretty strong reducing agent, so it can react with the oxygen in the air, and then iodine is spat out. As time goes on, we can see the formation of our hydroiodic acid with this beautiful, brilliant purple color. And as the temperature gets higher and higher, we'll eventually start to distill it over. This has to be one of my favorite acids, as I really just enjoy the color of it. I also moved my light around and I got this beautiful video of it boiling and I don't really know how to describe this, but it almost looks metallic. It also feels like the gates of hell have opened and I'm playing Black Ops 1 Zombies. <laughs> the hydroiodic acid is slowly making its way up the adapter and condensing in the condenser. Now the hydroiodic acid coming over is in its aqueous and gaseous form. We can see a reaction with the sodium hydroxide solution and the hydroiodic gas, which small amounts of sodium iodide and water are being made. The hydroiodic acid did have a little bit of issues in the joints, and maybe grease would have been better than Teflon tape. Though, you can see how purple the aqueous acid is. The sodium hydroxide trap is really more just in case if any cloudy distillate comes over, which is usually from impurities in the phosphoric acid, but it seems like we're good here. Once I knew we were good, I switched the flask out, and now we're collecting our hydroiodic acid. Now normally, you would also attach a hose to the vacuum inlet and have the gas be boiled into water to collect any hydroiodic acid gas fumes coming out. I have done this before, but you really don't get as much back as you think. Now to show you that hydroiodic gas is escaping, we can see that the pH paper does indeed change colors. And with it being immediately red, shows that the pH is quite low. After some time, the distillation did slow down a little bit, and I was coming to the end of the distillation. We can also see in the original reaction flask that some of the color is being lost. This is generally a good sign to when the distillation is coming to an end. And finally, the drops are coming so slowly, and they're quite light, which also is indication that we're almost done. And with that, we have our final yield of hydroiodic acid. It really is such a beautiful color and purpley acid. Now, I did have my fumigation going and my camera doesn't do justice, but when I was pouring this in, there was quite a bit of fumes coming out. We roughly came out to about 19.5 milliliters of hydroiodic acid. Now, what we can do is actually check the density to see kind of where our concentration is. The density that I measured was about 1.770 and the temp inside my shed was around 12 degrees Celsius. What this means is likely there's some uncertainties in my measurements, or there's some elemental iodine dissolved in it, or it was just cold enough that more gas could be dissolved into it. I'm not really sure. Though, a titration would be the best way to figure out what the acidity is. I'm just too lazy to do one. Now, overall, I got about 34.71 grams of, let's just say, 57% hydroiodic acid, which means I got a percent yield of 25.68. This is really weird, as I've done this procedure before, same exact way, and I got like 28 milliliters of hydroiodic acid. Now, I have done the procedure before, collecting the fumes that come out, but I really didn't get that much back. I really don't know what went wrong, but sometimes that just happens. I'd likely need to collect the fumes again, and see maybe that was the reason why. If you really want a good video on this, I definitely recommend Apoptosis, as he did a lot more in depth and explained it a lot better than I did. Make sure to go check him out. Overall, I'm happy with the video, as I had two previous experiments not work, and you know, I just, I just needed this. And last but not least, thank you so much to my Patreons, you guys support the channel, and I really cannot thank you enough for doing that.